Hi you guys and welcome back to this last little video of the year, I think. This one is going to be just recapping um, my performances this year and talking about the progression of five months of me getting back into performing and what I'm feeling like when it comes to performing now, what my last experiences of the year were like performing and just maybe any, any you know, thoughts that come to, to mind <laughs> about performing. So I've said it so many times, but just in case you're new, um, I hadn't performed for seven years. I graduated from my master's degree in viola performance and then just didn't perform for seven years. I was teaching, I was burned out from performing, lost track of what music was, didn't know what music was anymore, couldn't listen to music, didn't really want to practice anything. Um, I just had a weird time with music for seven years. <laughs> and through teaching my students and having fun with music again, being lighthearted about music and just enjoying music again through the love and joy of my students, it helped me to remember again what music is and to remind myself that I actually can play my instrument. <laughs> and it inspired me to start studying with my teacher again. I just felt this massive push from the universe to actually pick up my instrument again and start practicing and start honing my craft and to prepare a recital program. And I was terrified to do that. I have a whole playlist of videos really talking about it um, all the way through my very first performance of 2022. And then this is the very last one where in December I um, played on my studio's winter recital, which was really fun and beautiful. And then I actually played some Christmas carols on the harp for my apartment complex here at the holiday party. So. Um, interestingly, by the end, and I've done seven performances this year, let's recount. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's seven. So in August, I did a practice performance on YouTube. I'm going to count that because I did a live stream. I, per I performed my entire recital for you guys and you held some positive space for me. I practiced performing. I did it from memory. Um, the things that I was planning on playing from memory, I played from memory. Then I rented out a church and did a practice performance for my other half and a friend. And then I did the same thing again, rented out a church and performed for my studio and friends. And then I performed at the Academy of Music in Philadelphia. And then I went back to Ar the University of Arizona and did a recital at um, the Fred Fox School of Music. And then let's see, I performed at my studio winter recital which was this month and then I did my um, little Christmas carols on the harp for my apartment so that's seven performances in total which actually isn't that many but it's way more <laughs> it's way more than I thought that I would ever do this year um, in the end of 2021 I was like I'll just do like one recital I'll just do one recital but it just turned into this wonderful experience and playing and performing and just getting out of my comfort zone and just having fun with the whole process. So the winter studio recital, I, I just played two pieces. They're from the solos for Young Violinist book one. There's one piece in there called The Sleeping Princess. And I did post that on YouTube, so you can, I'll link it below as well if you're interested. And then I also played um, a piece called Prayer from Hansel and Gretel. And um, those are my two little pieces that I played. I didn't practice them very much. I played them for my teacher once and had fun with them. I wasn't like practicing like a crazy person, you know, like I was with my previous repertoire because in my mind, this repertoire that I was playing was just really easy for me. I made it a little bit more interesting with making it, making the fingerings more interesting to me um, and more expressive, but I just wasn't really bothered by, you know, these pieces because in my mind psychologically they were just they weren't a problem for me and so I went into the recital I played with my pianist for like 15 minutes before the recitals uh you know when we were doing our rehearsal I did a quick little 15 minute rehearsal with her and 
you know, that, and then it was it. And then I was a couple hours later performing it for the recital. And I also played with some of my students on the recital as well. And it was just really fun. It was really fun. I was sitting there in the audience watching my students play and just be awesome on stage. And I was so proud. <laughs> I was so very proud. And then my turn was coming in the recital. I was like, oh my goodness, my, my turn's coming. I started to get a little bit nervous. But after all these performances that I've done this year, I already expected that I would be nervous. I um, was familiar with that feeling and knew that I was okay, that it was gonna be fine. And remember that I love music and that I love the viola. I love my pieces and that I was gonna just have fun playing the, the pieces and enjoy the beautiful sound of the viola and the piano and to um, just have a good time with it and not be like too serious about it, you know, just stay lighthearted. And so I, I loved it. I had a great time on stage. <laughs> I had a really great time on stage. And, and then for my um, little Christmas carols moment with the harp for my apartment complex here this year, last year, I went down and I played a couple little Christmas carols just for the ladies in the office. I was really nervous. I made all these mistakes. My hands were shaking. Um, I was just kind of learning the harp at that point. I'm still just kind of learning the harp, but this was different. This was the largest audience that I've played for all year. I had been teaching all day and, um, you know, I guess a week before I had really started to amp up my harp practice. And so I was just practicing maybe 30 minutes to an hour on the harp every day rather than the viola. <laughs> And I was just playing four little Christmas carols. I played Silent Night, Lo How a Rose Ever Bloometh, um, We Three Kings, and Green Sleeves. So I played those four little tunes. And so on the eve the evening of the Christmas recite or the Christmas concert or the holiday um, apartment complex concert. I was just done with teaching. I grabbed a little drink of water, a quick little bite to eat, and then grabbed my little tiny um, Lewis Creek harp, the one that I can just put on my shoulder and, and travel around and play. And we just took the elevator down, went downstairs. I There was a massive amount of people there, just a massive amount of people. Everyone turned around and looked at me uh, holding my harp, and I just started to like play the harp in my little Harp has such a tiny, teeny, tiny voice and nobody could hear. I couldn't even hear what I was doing because everybody was talking. But suddenly, suddenly everyone went quiet. And I um, you just made a little joke aloud and said, oh my gosh, the pressure's on or something, you know, better not make a mistake now or whatever. And made everybody laugh. And I started to play Silent Night and um, just made a little joke and said, do you guys recognize this one? And they all started to listen as I was playing Silent Night and then they started to sing along. <laughs> and not just sing along in tune and beautifully, but harmonizing. Like this whole group of people from the apartment were there with their children and, you know, having a lovely time and they were singing along with me. And I just almost burst into tears and lost my control of my playing <laughs> because it was so beautiful to have everybody there all you know listening and then singing along with the harp it was just magical so the emotions of that my hands started to shake again I kind of got a little bit nervous I made a few little mistakes here and there and I really didn't improvise very much because it was tight my my harp's voice was kind of tiny and I didn't want to keep everybody you know, just standing there waiting for me to get through this like improvisation that nobody could really hear. So I just um, kind of kept it really short and sweet, but it was so magical. And even though I made these funny little mistakes here and there, people ran up to me and, and just said, that was so beautiful. Thank you so much. Your harp is so beautiful. And just asked me about it. And I let them kind of like, you know, do the strum and just like pluck little notes and some children were there and I let them like pluck the harp and we just, it was so, so, so magical. And I just, I don't know that I really would have been able to, to 
do that in in the past you know it's like I realized in that moment, and I talked to, to my um, studio about that at our last virtual studio circle and probably violin group class, but the, it was like, I just remember, I just like remembered or had this epiphany that, oh my gosh, performing is like playing, uh, not like playing your instrument, but like having fun, like playing a game. Like when you're playing music, it's a fun, <laughs> it's a fun, playful and lighthearted experience. And I was thinking of like, you know, these performers like Lindsey Sterling and Taylor Davis and all the great performers, you know, how they like, they are clearly having a great time on stage. They're dancing around, they're interacting with the audience. They're not, um, you know, like, you know, they're not like afraid. They're sending out their energy, like this like wonderful beacon of a pillar of energy out to everybody. And they command the situation and in this beautiful loving way and so I kind of was like <laughs> trying to do that in my tiny way by making a little joke here or there or like talking to the audience or looking around and um just just that like communication was just really special and they sang along with all four of my pieces it was just so magical I I think that was just the perfect way to end the year it was so lovely. So as I go into the new year, um, in 2023, I'm going to take all the things that I learned, which is I'm definitely still going to be nervous when I perform. Um, it's, in, it was interesting for me to know that I'm much more nervous and much more serious with the repertoire that I find to be really hard and challenging and intimidating. I find that or at least I did, I don't, I mean, I'll probably continue to be that way, but I just found that to be very, very challenging mentally for me. Whereas repertoire that was, I, in my mind, thought to be easy and not a problem. My capacity to perform and be comfortable performing that was way higher, <laughs> it was way higher than me trying to like do something that I thought was very technically difficult for me to make it sound very good and for the phrasing to come out and for all of the things that I wanted, you know, to, to, to achieve in the performance. It, that was interesting. Um, it's not going to mean that I'm not going to perform things that are difficult for me because I still need to perform things that are challenging for me, but it's just interesting. So I'm probably going to add on my next recital, just some more like fun things that are more enjoyable for me to play not just stressful, <laughs> not just stressful and technically challenging. Um, so I'll kind of like do a little mishmash maybe. Um, the, and it's something that I had started to learn during this five month process from August till December that I really do need to just have fun with the whole process to enjoy being on stage, to enjoy playing the viola and to have a good time because if I'm having a good time, everyone else is going to have a good time as well. And it's just really precious to have people's focus and attention on you, you know? And so enjoy, enjoy and spread the love and spread the beauty. And um, don't be, don't be like trying to try too hard. Don't be too serious, just have fun with it. And what will be, will be. In my last video on the reflections of 2022, I talked about um, just like, perfectionism is not a thing like it's not going to ever be perfect but what is wonderful is to realize that you had a good time that you did your very best in that moment and that you that's all you can ask for <laughs> is, is did you have a good time and did you do your best and if you if you did then you get a gold star you get two thumbs up you get three gold stars you get some applause right? Um, if you had a horrible time and you, you know, just had a panic attack and you hated the whole thing, then that's not very fun, right? And I've definitely had performances where that's happened to me. I had one of those this year, but it also was a really strong reminder to me of, of what I do want to experience when I'm on stage. And Anyway, so I just wanted to share my last little thoughts on performing this year and tell you what my last two performances were like um, for the 2022. I'm so very grateful that I I took this 
little, I went through this doorway of, hey, you can perform. <laughs> you should actually play your instrument and perform and practice. Because like I talked about in my previous video on my 2222 reflections, I feel like it helped me to be more me. It helped me to um, connect with myself, a, a part of myself that I can't connect with unless it's with music and with my viola. Like it's a weird thing how our instrument is really a part of ourselves and if we neglect that, we're neglecting ourselves in a way, you know? And I'm so glad that I started this relationship again with my instrument, making time for it, practicing, delving into the tricky stuff, delving into the fun stuff and easy things and just exploring and having a really good time with my instrument. So, Oh, I'm very excited for for next year and my plan for next year is to just do more recitals <laughs> but actually to help lift my students who want to do recitals help them to do recitals and then for us to play things together and for me to maybe play one little thing on their recital too so um, that we can just all have a really good time performing and I don't know, we'll see what else happens in 2023 as far as performing goes. I have some other projects up my sleeve and it's hard to make time to do all of, all of the creative things because our creative flow, you know, it takes time and space and energy to do. And I'm, try I'm trying to figure out how to balance that at the moment. But anyway, I guess that's my last little video for the year you guys thank you so much for being here on this journey with me and I appreciate your comments and you know watching me go through this little wild ride of getting back into performing again it's like I said I'm going to say it one more time it's not about being perfect because it will not be perfect it's about enjoying yourself and doing the very best that you can in that moment and if you keep doing your very best and you keep at it, your very best will become better over time. And that's all you can ask is for you to be able to just give it your all, for you to show up for yourself, for you to not be letting fear get in your way of doing things that you want to do. You have one life. <laughs> you have one life in this life, right? And it, you should go, go live it, right? Go do it. Go do your thing. And anyway, I'll see you all very soon. Thank you so much for being here with me. And we'll just continue doing fabulous things.